Welcome to a special shout out and rant section of Everything Compliance. The rock and roll singer Meatloaf recently died and the Everything Compliance gang wanted to pay tribute to Meatloaf. So we have a special remembrance section and tribute to Meatloaf. This is Tom Fox. As most people know, the rock and roll singer Meatloaf died uh, last week and the Everything Compliance Gang wanted to pay a tribute to Meatloaf with reflections of what Meatloaf meant to each one of us. It turned out to be really interesting with uh, some very different reminiscences of Meatloaf and if you're a Meatloaf fan or if you enjoy rock and roll music or you're just into pop culture, you will enjoy this special segment of Everything Compliance. And now, as I mentioned at the start of this podcast, we have a special segment where we're going to pay honor to Meatloaf. Uh, Fellow Texan, Meatloaf, uh, whether you go with the formal Mr. Loaf or the informal Meat, uh, he was a big part of my rock and roll life, uh, starting in college and all the way forward. And my tribute's going to be, of course, to Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Not simply because it's the... uh, uh, purient song or song for every purient teenage boy who may be a little bit older now, but because uh, the first time I played that song, I told my dad to listen very carefully because there was an insert from Phil Rizzuto where he called a bass runner uh, in the context of a boy and girl in the backseat of a car. And uh, when it got to the end uh, and there was a play at the plate, somebody was going to maybe score a home run. Uh, We don't know what happened. But my father had one of the biggest grins I've ever seen. And uh, that struck me uh, for several reasons. One, the greatness of Phil Rizzuto. Number two, the greatness of the song. But also that, you know, we boys, we just never grow up. So my memory from uh, Meatloaf is Paradise for the Dashboard Light. Jay, what do you have for us? Uh, Since I'm one of those folks who do remember Meatloaf, uh, I'm going to go with You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth, a.k.a. Hot Summer Night. On a hot summer night, would you offer your throat to the wolf with the red roses? Yes, I bet you say that to all the boys. I have a couple memories of Meatloaf in 1975. The Rocky Rocky Horror Picture Show came out. Meatloaf was in the cast in London. He played Eddie. And there's a point where uh, you talk back at the screen and everyone says, what's for dinner? Meatloaf. The other Meatloaf record uh, memory is from 1978 when he first appeared on Saturday Night Live. And to actually see that big, sweaty ball of human singing passion, I didn't know what to make of it, but I knew I liked it. So here's to you, Mr. Loaf. Singing up in that band in the sky, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, I've uh, I've a sporting memory for Meatloaf. So some of you will know uh, my hometown club is Hartlepool United, and I've been to uh, Hartlepool have a checkered history both on and off the pitch. They have a couple of moments of glory. One uh, when the great Brian Clough was manager. But effectively, I've been to at least two final games when the money ran out and they were meant to be uh, the last game before the club's extinction. And in the last 15 years or so, you, some of you will know that Meatloaf professed to be a Hartlepool United fan and he would carry around with him a Hartlepool United mascot, which was something of his comfort, it seems, when traveling. So whenever we've been in financial difficulty for the past 15 years or so, the word has gone round the ground, don't worry, meatloaf will save us. So the danger, I think, for all Hartlepool United fans today is that our plan B, if you like, has gone. But I'm inspired by the fact that Wrexham, a club in broadly similar financial circumstances, have been taken over recently by Ryan Reynolds and Rob uh, McElhenney. So my joy is that I get to speak uh, about this on this podcast. We all know how many Hollywood A-listers listen to this podcast on a regular basis. 
So if any of you are out there, give me a call. You can be the new meatloaf. Matt Kelly, what do you have for us? Well, you know, as much as I do appreciate that Meatloaf was a good artist, uh, I was not the hugest Meatloaf fan, but I like what he did. I'm just going to share a certain segment of the population who's out there. This is what they are experiencing with it. And this memory happened just this morning with me when I was chatting with a very accomplished compliance officer in their mid-30s. And I said, did you hear the Meatloaf died? And they said, who? Folks? Maybe we're going to feel a bit old, but there's a significant portion of the world out there who just didn't know who he was and had to go and look him up. And that's all I have for you. Well, Karen, uh, what do you have for us of a memory of meatloaf? Well, I wanted to highlight, which uh, Jay did as well, which meatloaf was not just an incredible singer. But he had a number of acting credits to his name, the most you know, famous of which is Rocky Horror. And so the song that I always think of when I think of Meatloaf, other than, of course, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, which Tom already took, um, is the Hot Patooties Bless My Soul from, from Rocky Horror. Uh, so, I, I mean, Rocky Horror is obviously formative for everyone in every generation, I think, at different times. Um, but the thing that is funny is that uh, my memory is that my father, whose birthday is on Sunday, every year, no matter what, no matter what the scenario is, we have to have meatloaf on his birthday. Uh, that's which is a known thing. That's birthday order, birthday dinner order. So I will be having that on Sunday with my parents. And uh, that song likely will be in, in the background because you have to play meatloaf. <laughs> well, here. that's great. Okay, and now we're to shout outs and rants. Hope you enjoyed this short tribute to Meatloaf from the Everything Compliance Gang. Check out the Everything Compliance Gang shout outs and rants, which will post on Tuesday, January 26, and the full episode of Everything Compliance, which will post on Thursday, January. 27, both shows appearing on the Compliance Podcast Network.